Dana Brooksby. Now I'm going to tell you about John B. Watson, the father of behaviorism. I'm going to tell you about this man who came from a strong ethical family, or well, at least was taught strong ethics, but lived quite the opposite. But as a psychologist, he was brilliant. In fact, he felt he was a poor student growing up, but at the young tender age of 16, he entered college. Five years later, he got a master's degree in psychology and philosophy. And though this man had a father who left the family at 13 and followed after his father in a lot of moral patterns, he himself was the father of behaviorism. Or behaviorism as the belief that behaviors are acquired through conditioning. There are two types of conditioning, classical and operative. Classical is occurring naturally. Operative or operant is conditioning with punishments or rewards. He proved this with an experiment that he's famous for with his assistant Rosalie Rayner called Little Albert, where he took a nine month old boy and placed fuzzy white objects in front of him. And at first that didn't scare the child. That wasn't his intention. But the intention of the experiment was to prove that you could instill or condition fear into someone or any other emotion for that example. So he took the nine month old boy and clanged a hammer and associated that with the furry white object, or the rat. In fact, with time, this young boy would freak out even at the sight of something fuzzy and small, like a white a rat or a bunny, or even someone's beard, or a furry white coat. Experiment was never finished. The boy was never reconditioned. So researchers believe that for years, this boy had this terrible phobia of anything white and fuzzy. Well, they decided to d research that further, Found out seven year, it took seven years to find out what happened to the boy. And the year before they found out, they found out he passed away from a brain, from brain activity, or fluid in his brain. But how has he affected the psychology and education world today? Well, he's authored several books on psychology. One I find is ironic, on children and infants and the behavior of them and caring for them. I find that ironic because he had a terrible relationship with his family, especially his children. But he was, he was president of the American Psychology Association, vice president of T. J. Walter Thompson Advertising Company, authored several books, as I mentioned previously, and he was a master lecturer at the university level. Yet this man lived kind of a free life, if you get what I mean. He had an affair with the woman that he performed that experiment with, along with another student of his. He had a terrible relationship with his children. And by the end of his life, he was a hermit living in Connecticut in a small farmhouse. I myself, as an educational slash psychology major, I find him fascinating because the man who didn't believe that heredity had anything to do with how we are affected in life actually was a lot like his father. So I found that ironic. Also, from a psychology perspective, he had this quote that I'd like to share. He said, give me a dozen healthy infants, well-informed, in my own specified world to bring them up in, and I'll guarantee to take anyone at random and train him to become any type of specialist I might select. Doctor, lawyer, artist, merchant chief, yes, even beggar man and thief, regardless of his talents, penchant, tendencies, abilities, and vocation in the race of his ancestors. So to an extent, I agree about that. I believe you can train a child, and it doesn't matter where they come from. I also see from my own personal experience that guidance counselors who would have taken the time to allow me to prove myself, I would have done a lot better in school because I'm a terrible test taker, but I've accepted that fact and know how to get around it. He believed that heredity had nothing to do with where we come from, that you could train a behavior into someone through those different types of conditions. I myself believe that you just need to show a child their potential, train them and give them the benefit of the doubt and keep giving them chances and eventually they'll prove themselves and the rest of everyone else around them that they'll succeed. John Watson was a genius, but he also had a very reckless life. In fact, he died alone in that Connecticut farmhouse. My personal opinion of him, he was a genius and he had a lot to offer the world when it came to psychology. He was kind of like the C.S. Lewis of psychology or the Martin Luther of psychology, but I hope I don't follow after him when it comes to the family life. And I hope to follow after him in the academic sense. But needless to say, John Watson is a famous influential character for the experiments he performed, for the information that he gathered. And 
It was a pleasure to study him. I feel like I got to know him, even if it was at an interesting level.